What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. For today's video, we're asking the question, how can we connect our triads with scales? Let's go. So for today's video, we're posing the question, how do we connect our triads with scales? And the reality is, it's actually pretty simple. You know, this is a question that gets brought up a lot to me during Zoom lessons. And the reality is, once we find context that we're familiar with, it becomes so much easier to digest and to apply, you know? I think there's a great, how would you say, like boundary from understanding a concept and then applying the concept. And finding a context that you really understand helps dramatically. So with that being said, let's dive into today's video. So for the context of today's video, let's use the John Mayer song, Last Train Home, off his latest record, Sob Rock. Couple reasons why I chose that song. The first being is it has a very strong major tonality to it. The second reason is because the chord progression that happens beneath the soloing is super simple. Essentially one, four, five in the key of E major. So in general, it's a song that's very easy to digest on the guitar. Before we dive into the playing part though, I wanna ask the question, why is it important to connect our triads with the scales? You know, what's the point? As someone who preaches the understanding of triads so much as I do on this channel, you know, the more you know your triads, you can essentially play any chord progression anywhere you want on the guitar. Ultimate freedom when it comes to chords. Now pairing that with the matching scale to create the melody or the soloing, well, now you're creating different playing fields on the instrument, you know? Because some parts of the instrument, as you all know, lend itself better to different types of playing, you know? Let's say if you're in the middle of the fingerboard, you may be more thorough. If you're higher up, maybe you get a bit faster, include some more bending. As you get higher, much more bending. It becomes easier to bend, you know? You're expressing yourself in different ways, you know? And that's where you sort of unlock the whole instrument, combining the triads, the matching scale, and your vocabulary, and now you can say whatever you want on the instrument, anywhere you want, which is super, super cool. So to make everything easy to understand, let's separate the fingerboard into playing fields. Our first playing field will take place between frets four, five, six, and seven, right? So chords, one, four, five in the key of E major, right? We're starting on the four chord, A major. Root position, our E major, first inversion. And to add a bit of brightness, I'm gonna make our B major also root position. You know what I mean? Super simple to digest. If anything, I would say turn the record on and just jam with John in the solo section, just rhythm. 
right? Get that groove really under your fingers. Now, remember our playing field, frets four, five, six, and seven. Where is our E scale in this section? Remember caged? That's where it comes in handy. We have our C shape, E major scale. As you can see, I'm ascending to our highest note, B major, or this B, and descending to our lowest note, G sharp, the major third degree. And in this playing field, you know, my lines may have some bending, but I'm not gonna be quote unquote shredding over the progression in this one section, you know? So we turn the loop on. You know what I mean? Still sounds really good, but I'm just approaching it in a different way as I would approach it, let's say, in our next playing field. So our next playing field, frets 9, 10, 11, 12. This is essentially the place where you see John solo in Last Train Home ballad version. Here's where the fun begins. We can get a bit more bendy, a bit more Again, quote unquote, shredding. It's not really shredding, but you know what I mean. Our chord voicings, again, strings two, three, four. A major, first inversion. E major, second inversion. And our B, also first inversion. practicing, make sure you hit those chords nice and clear. I'm doing like a claw version, so I hit all the notes at once. Even if you strum it, make sure articulate, strong, you know, with confidence. Now in this playing field, where's our E major scale? Again, caged. Our G shape, E major. and we're going root to root in this case. Actually, I can go down to the sixth, the C sharp. And all those notes work perfect. So let's see it in context.
you know what I mean? The fun starts. Put overdrive and you're really starting to get at it. The next playing field and the final playing field I want to talk about is frets 12, 13, 14, 15. Right? Our A major, second inversion, our E major, root, and our B, second inversion. already here, you're probably saying to yourself, well, that's my root position E major scale. And you're right. If I want, I can go to the F sharp as well. And bonus in this same section, we can mix major scale with minor pentatonic. But the key is the major third has to be hit by a bend from this G natural to G sharp. So in context, You know what I mean? That's where, again, with overdrive, you can do much more bending, combine major and minor pentatonic, and that's where you can sort of get, like, essentially the John Mayer solo. <laughs> well, all right, guys, that is today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.